Hey guys, today we're going to talk about the Citizen Promaster Nighthawk. I've had this watch for a few months now, and I just wanted to give my thoughts on it, uh, things I like about it and things I don't like about it. So let's get into the video. First, we'll just talk about the case. Um, it's a really solid case. It almost looks like a uh, Pelican case. It's a nice storage piece for the watch if you don't have a watch case. It's kind of rubberized on the inside and it has the Citizen logo at the top. Also kind of rubbery. And then there you just see the extra links from the bracelet. All right. All right. So there are a lot of specs and I will put them in the description. Um, but I'm just going to give you a high level overview here. So the model number is BJ7000 52E. And it has a Citizens Caliber Eco Drive B877. Case size is 42 millimeters. The case thickness is 12 millimeters. Case back is solid. The crystal is a mineral crystal. <clears throat> The dial color is black. Um, I'm not really sure if you can see it though. It is black, but in the center of the dial uh, is where the panels are for the Eco Drive charging of the battery. It has a screw down crown, and this crown is for the the inner uh, slide rule there. Um, and the lug width is 22 millimeters. It has solid end links and a steel bracelet. And I typically don't wear it on the bracelet, <clears throat> but for review sake, uh, the last week or two, I actually sized the bracelet and used it. Um, let me know in the comments below if you wanna see uh, sizing of a bracelet. So the bracelet has a lock and push button deployment. It is water resistant up to 200 meters. It has a calendar, uh, the date at the 3 o'clock position. Arabic numerals at the 12 and the 6. There's a size comparison against my Casio G Shock. This is the DW6900. And here it is against the Seiko Flightmaster. Right, so some of the things I like about the watch. <clears throat> the first thing I like about it is the Citizens Eco Drive. Um, it said that these batteries usually last for about 15 years or so. Um, I do hear that it's a pain in the neck to replace the battery once it does go. But this thing charges off of any light source, whether it be the sun, uh, these studio lights here, and the charge is supposed to last about six months, even if you keep it in like total darkness for that six months. So that's the one thing I really like about it. Um, the second thing that I like about it that I didn't think I was going to like about it is the bracelet. Um, I'm really not a bracelet guy, but I actually like this. Um, if you can see here, I have been using it a lot and it doesn't scratch as much. Um, I mean, it's practically no scratches on here, but that's the one thing I do like about it. And it was something that I did not think I would like about it. There it is on the wrist. Um... The other thing I like about it is that it's a strap monster. Um, I'm going to show you a couple of the straps I typically use on here. So these are the straps that's most likely on this watch. All right, um, a couple of my Instagram shots, um, even other videos I had up, you can actually see this watch on a few of these straps. One of the other things I like about this watch is the Thule feel. Um, to be quite honest, I do not use any of this stuff. 
I, I've set the GMT, but I actually don't really use it. Um, so pretty much it's just the uh, 24 hour situation where um, the small red plane shows you the uh, 24 hour markers and the, if you can see it, the white plane shows you the 1 a.m. to 12 p.m. Um, hour markers. Um, I don't use the tachometer um, or the slide rule um, to be quite honest but it's just cool you know what I mean um, people that's in the it's just a cool feature people that's in the tool watches um, that's probably one of the reasons that they're into them just because of the look of it um, and it's not as busy I mean it is busy you got a lot going on but it's not as busy as the flight master and because the dial is bigger, maybe it's, uh, it looks less busy. The other thing I like about it is the loom. And I'll give you a shot of that in a second. Here's a much better loom shot in my basement. My dryer is running, so forgive the background noise. But that's what it looks like. The last super positive on this is the price. Um, brand new, I got this on eBay for $173. Um, this is a lot of watch for 173 bucks. So the only thing, not even a negative, but the one thing that I don't particularly care for is the weight. Um, on on the steel bracelet, this is a pretty hefty, uh, it's a pretty hefty watch. Um, but again, that's preference. Uh, if you like bracelets, this probably doesn't even bother you. I like them on these NATO straps. It's much lighter that way. So that's probably the only thing um, I could say is a knock on the watch. Um, the second thing would be, um, I would like to add drill case lugs just to make swap changes simpler. Um, it's not a hard thing to do. Um, like I said, uh, let me know in the comments if you want to see a video of swapping out the uh, straps or sizing the uh, bracelet. So it's not really a hard thing to do, but uh, if you had drill case lugs, it would make it even that much easier. Alright guys, so to wrap this up, this is a stud in my opinion. Um, the fact that it's a strap monster. I love the 42 millimeter size. Um, it's quite large, but being that the dial is so busy, 42 millimeters makes the dial big enough that it's still really legible. Um, I like the loom. I like the price. The bracelet is grown on me. Uh, sometimes I really don't feel like that heft, so I'll just throw it on a NATO strap. Um, the only thing, like I said, was kind of nitpicky is the fact that the lugs wasn't drilled um, for easier uh, bracelet swaps and the weight on the bracelet. Um, like I said, those are two nitpicky things, but those are just things that um, I, I take notice to. All right, so thanks for stopping by and checking out this video. Let me know in the comments what you think about this watch or tool watches in general, and I'll see you guys on the next video.